Hi, my name is Rick Fisher and I'm a lighting designer and happy to be talking to you by the stage door of the Victoria Palace in London, one of the West End theatres. And this is the theatre that's very significant to me because it's where my long-running hit, Billy Elliot the Musical, ran for 11 years, supplied by White Light. I've known about White Light probably as long as I've been in London working in the theatre, which goes back to the late 70s. One of my first jobs was as a resident stage manager at the Oval House in South London, a small, very poor arts club. And every once in a while, we would do our own shows, and sometimes I would hire equipment. And I always remember thinking that White Light was a great company to hire from. My memory was that they threw in a cable with every light that you got. So that endeared me to them, because my budgets were incredibly minuscule. But also, they never treated you like you were a small client, and that was also very welcome. When you're doing fringe theatre work, you were treated with the same courtesy and help as anybody doing a bigger show. So White Light have supplied theatres and shows I've worked at for over 40 years, I think. I remember going to Fulham, and every once in a while I still catch myself when I visit Wimbledon. I still think, oh, I'm going to Fulham, because it was so ingrained, because it was so difficult to get to by public transport, Filmer Road. That's a very strong memory. I also have a very strong memory related to Billy Elliot. And Billy was a big show for me. And it was a big show for all of us. And it was an, hard to believe 11 years after running for 11 years in the West End. But at the time, it was an unknown quantity and a risk. And we had an unrealistically small lighting budget for the show. And when I approached White Light, we spent a lot of time adapting the rig to what we could afford. And. Uh, White Light gave us a very good deal if the company that was producing paid six months up front to cover the capital cost of buying some equipment for the show. When the producer came to write the check for six months up front while we were still in production, he clenched. And Brian Raven always tells me the story that he got a call from Eric Fellner, who was a big film producer in the UK. Brian didn't know who Eric was, no reason why he should. Brian's personal assistant did know who Eric was and was all excited that this important man was on the phone. And Brian and Eric negotiated a better deal for White Light so that he didn't have to write a big check. It was so in his mind that when I introduced Brian to Eric at the first night party for Billy Elliot, and it was a huge success, he said, we're going to switch to that different deal from now on. So it worked for everybody. And that that kind of support is invaluable when you're working on an unknown project. Good friend. I, I think it's very easy. One of the great differences between working in America and working here is that the higher companies, and I mean all of them, we see them as colleagues and people who can help us as opposed to competitive or the enemy because they're charging you money or they cost, things cost too much. Billy was a very favorite project because we really worked very hard on that to bring, to bring the rig to fruition and give me the tools that we needed. But uh, another great long-running show of mine is an, an Inspector Calls, which White Light has supplied over the years. And I know that they've actively had to remember to not throw some of the old lights away because the show has had a 25-year long life and we'll be going out again next autumn, I'm told. And some of the equipment's pretty obsolete now, but we still use it and still love it. I think the great asset has been the fact that they feel like they're on your side. And you can have an honest conversation, find out how to achieve what you want to achieve in ways that works for everybody. They help me keep up with the business because often I find instead of going with a very specific ask, I want this piece of equipment or that piece of equipment, I often will say, I want something like this. What will do the job for me that you might suggest? And I value that advice a lot. It used to be that you just had a few ideas and you rigged them and you got the equipment to do them. Now you're having, for a big show, you're having to plan on all the possibilities. So you're specifying things that you don't really even know how you're going to use, but you know that they bring you options. And everything's gotten so much more complicated and with so many more parameters that um, it takes a lot more management of the equipment than just 
rigging a light to do one job. You're rigging a light that can often do a hundred different jobs in a hundred different ways. I think it's going to be a, an, another area of incredible growth where the type of things we do, the bedrock of supplying equipment to theaters, which I know is where White Light started, is going to be an increasingly small proportion, I think, of what happens. Events, outdoor events, site-specific shows. I think it's going to grow and grow and grow. And it's going to be things that have to work in totally different infrastructure environments. No mains power, no dimmers anymore. Things are going to be being run off of people's telephones and remotely. I think it's going to be a lot of change and development. I think we can only imagine what might happen next.